Hi, I'm Expectus, and welcome to my studio. Today I want to talk to you about what devices I have and how I use them, mostly in my productions. To start, the sequencer I use most, because I don't want to use a computer on stage, I want to be able to travel light but not be dependent on the computer, is the Akai MPC Live. This is a sequencer which can send MIDI notes uh, to all my devices I have uh, and also uh, play samples and has some internal synths which are also great. Um, in total I think you can program up to 128 tracks simultaneously but that's not something I use. Um, the way I use it is I have uh, sequences and every sequence can be a track or a part of a track. So for instance, uh, when I make a trans live set, I have an intro, a verse, a build up, and then a drop. And some of these elements can be combined into sequences and some uh, cannot. So they have to be put in a next sequence. But uh, the real great thing about what the MPC does is that everything, um, every MIDI uh, channel that you make, so a MIDI track, um, can have its own program change. And the program changes are being sent when the sequence is being triggered. And it does that only once. So when I hit a new sequence, all new sounds from all the synthesizers I have over here are being triggered at that moment. So I can switch a sequence and then every sound is being um, yeah, sent uh, to a new value. So, so I can completely put a new song after, uh, after the other. So every sequence is different. And that's a really great thing to do. That's something that is lacking a little bit in the Archive Force. I don't know how to do that yet because yeah, you have tracks, they go from the top to the bottom and it's, it's similar to, to uh, what the push controller does for Ableton. It's uh, similar but then in a standalone way. But the, the only thing is when you go from clip to clip it's not possible to, uh, to have a program change uh, for the clip that is being triggered only once. Uh, you can trick it, you can put in uh, program change events, but when, uh, when it loops around, every time it loops around, uh, it triggers the program change. Too. So any changes you make in your synthesizer, for instance, I turn this, this, this cutoff knob on my synth, um, will be reset to its initial value. It does the program change again, and that's something um, maybe a guy could address for me. But yeah, for the rest, it's a, it's a great jamming device. More hands-on, you can program more sounds on it, and um, yeah, you have all all the knobs and touch screens for both, and it just works fantastic. Then there's the Yamaha Modi X6, which is a great, great, great synthesizer. It has uh, a couple of uh, different engines, like uh, you got the AWM engine, which can be used to um, play samples, but also uh, like use them as oscillators, and you can stack per part on which you can have 16, uh, you can stack eight uh, different samples. So you can really have full rich sounds. And there is a 128 note polyphony for the AWM. And next to that, there's also an FM engine, uh, which is based on the DX7, but has more operators. And um, I don't know exactly what the polyphony of that one is. I think it's 64 and you can play uh, play those 64 as well. So a multi timbrality of 16 channels um, with a polyphony uh, you won't get um, you get, won't get problems with. It's, it's really like enough. Um, and there next to that is my favorite synthesizer, this one. Uh, that's the Axis Virus TI2. And it also has 16 part multi timbrality, uh, but not uh, as much as polyphony as the Modi X does, because this is a virtual analog synthesizer, which has some uh, shark DSPs, I believe, and they uh, have to render the sounds. But this thing is amazing. You tweak some knobs and 
uh, what happens is you, you, you hit multiple sweet spots when you do that. Um, the sound is, is lush, is, is hard, is, is trancy, is techno. Yeah, you can achieve many things by, uh, yeah, by, by happy accidents, turning knobs and stuff, and it's really great, uh, great to do. Yeah, next to that is a Launch Control XL from uh, Novation, which basically sends MIDI notes or MIDI data to this. So I have some sliders and I have uh, knobs to twist and I can program uh, the knobs to do some stuff here in the MPC Live. Don't use it that much at the moment because I'm now working on I'm getting a full set of an hour and I want to have the, the musical note data first and uh, the way I, I work is like I told you I have the sequences which uh, which are all uh, in, in a certain order and I can use muting unmuting of all the tracks basically there are 16 under my control over here and there are eight over uh, my control under my control here um, and I can, I can use those two devices just like DJ. So I have this DJ mixer and the left channel is this and th this is the right channel and I can play songs and uh, mix them together and that works seamlessly because they have this Ableton Link technology which syncs them up perfectly and both of these devices send the MIDI clock information to the synthesizers as well and the synthesizers receive it and play the arpeggios and stuff and recorded lines um, yeah, automatically in tempo with, with all the rest so I don't have to think about uh, syncing them up that, that's, that's something that's really tied with the Ableton Link pro protocol and it works fantastic so that's something uh, for the Novation launch control. I can use it to yeah, uh, assign volumes to, to each uh, track or uh, do like a cutoff for every uh, track. But you can also program it. For instance, this one has eight knobs and you can assign them uh, as well. So that's, that's, that's way more easy for the force. But this one does only have four of these buttons. So that's why I got the, the launch control XL. And next to that is the Novation Circuit. And uh, the Novation Circuit is a great little device which has um, two Nova engines. Uh, these have this Novation liquid analog sound as they, uh, they call it. And there is two synths in there. And basically they sound very rich and, and trancy as well and you also have two drum parts so it's really fun to jam along and you can take it anywhere with you because it's 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 a little device so that's also a very nice thing to have when you uh, travel with your live set um, I, I also have this, this mini nova and it's it has the same sound as, as the, yeah, the Novation circuit, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot bigger. You have the keys, but yeah, I don't need the, the mini keyboard so. So I, at the moment, do not really use the mini Nova. Then uh, next to that, uh, I have this classic Roland JX-AP, which is from 1983, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, but I'm, I don't know for sure, but it's, it's a really warm and lush uh, synthesizer and has, has great yeah, DCOs which uh, have an analog filter, I think. And uh, I control that with uh, the Behringer X32 mixer I have and put some reverb and stuff on it because yeah, it's, it's a little dry uh, otherwise. It doesn't have any built-in effects. Um, next to that, finally, last but not least, there's the Virus C, which I own for almost 16 years, I think. I, I got it when it came out, and it's a really a beast of a synth. Um, same as the Access Virus TI2. I, I love the Virus C so much that I got the TI as well. I bought that this year. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm then able to have more polyphony of the, yeah, the famous Axis Virus sound. So I can use, for instance, this one with the Axis Virus C and this one with the Axis Virus DI. And yeah, I can, I can route them any way I want because this MIDI router, the Mio 10, um, is programmable via the computer and I don't have to, to patch any wires. So basically all MIDI 
and audio are routable uh, yeah, anywhere. So um, just by clicking on some stuff on the computer or um, using the faders on the Behringer X32, I'm able to route anything and every synth can be recorded individually into Ableton. So that's really handy to do and uh, uh, transform your live tracks into studio tracks which can be released later on uh, on the label or so um, which uh, yeah which uh, sounds a little bit more professional because when you do a live take sometimes you make errors the errors can be great stuff happy accidents are yeah sometimes great to have but yeah sometimes when you you have a, a live production or you wanted to release it on, on Spotify and Beatport and all these kind of things you wanted to have a little bit more of a polished sound and uh, when you record the whole track there are so many uh, pieces of audio that you can use and match up and remix and, and maybe add some stuff later on or use some virtual uh, studio instruments that um, it, it yeah it, it doesn't really matter you, you have enough material uh, to go along so um, this about it in short I want to thank you and uh, yeah hopefully see you next time and don't forget to subscribe